All right, everybody, welcome, welcome, welcome to our Monday sales training call. Um, this gentleman that's on sharing with us today is, is I mean, a killer, a killer, a killer, a killer, a Hall of Fame producer um, and building a big agency as well uh, with Family First Life. Um, and he, he really hasn't been here for that long, but came in um, and got out the gate fast uh, working uh, with um, FFL Capital um with easton Patton and um zach tordowski and really really exemplifies what it means to take full advantage of this business opportunity so uh we're going to have a great conversation um if you have questions during this conversation drop them in the chat so we can ask those questions of jake but uh hey jake i appreciate you being here uh being on with us today how you doing my brother jermaine it's a pleasure man thank you for having me on today bro i appreciate you yeah, absolutely, man. It's uh, the pleasure is ours. I appreciate you being on. So, first of all, tell us a little bit about you. Tell us about you, the family. A um, little bit about your background before you got into insurance. Yeah, bro. Um, from Montana, I was in the industry prior, but uh, mostly on like the property casualty side of things. So I was being like a true, you know, Jake from that company that we don't name on the commercials <laughs> all the time, right? Yeah. <laughs> um, home motto, farm ranch, small business, that type of thing. But yeah, man, so I went to college with Easton Patton. I was starting to dabble a little bit on the life insurance side of things. And I saw him post uh, his numbers, you know, from being here for seven months at the FFL annual convention in 2020. Uh, you know, first off, I was like, there's no way that's real. But number two, maybe it is. I'm going to give him a call and ask him for some advice and uh, just kind of escalate it from there, man. But, you know, I'm from Montana. Family-wise, we just uh, we just had our first child, our first daughter, Collins Lane Conan, uh, about set, eight days ago. You know, so uh, just into that, man. But I mean, couldn't be happier. This is the best place to be. Yeah, hundred percent, man. Well, congratulations on that, man. I remember, you know, I have two daughters and a son, and I remember when my daughter was born. It was like, man, one of the happiest moments of my life. So that's pretty cool. Yes. <laughs> So you're you're going through the sleepless nights and everything uh, right now. I know I know how that is. <laughs> you got it, bro. Adjusting to it, but it's all good. Yes, sir. Absolutely, absolutely. So, um, then give everybody a little bit of background as far as when you got started with Family First Life and kind of how it was for your your first couple of months as you're getting adjusted to the life side of the business as opposed to the casualty side of the, side of the business. Man, for sure. So I mean, uh, the the month that I ultimately decided was that I was going to come over here was April of 2020, you know, not so coincidentally Easton Patton helped out 93 families, you know, just on his own pain in that one month and, uh, you know, hit BP with just three other riders outside of him, you know, so I kind of did like a personal leadership audit, you know, I was like, okay, you know, I'm good at what I do here. Nobody that I, that I'm surrounded by is doing, you know, hitting numbers like that and producing and working like that at that level. So, I'm just going to humble myself up and be a sponge when I come into this opportunity. And obviously what he's doing is working. Yeah. So I'm just going to do everything that dude tells me to do. And I'm going to have him on a, you know, on my favorite contact speed dial list, you know, so I can call him multiple times a day. But uh, I mean, biggest struggles for sure was just the phones, dude. I mean, hands down, just like everybody else is, it's the core of our business. So we got to learn to love it. But uh, for whatever reason, I was, I was the same as every other agent, right? When they come in, you know, I was fighting the phones. I thought I had the best script on the planet. I thought I had the best rebuttals on the planet. You know, I was so good, Jermaine, on the phone in my mind at that time that I wouldn't even get on Zoom. You know, so uh, that, that was when I really got, you know, some good constructive criticism. It was like the first time I opened myself up and was like, all right, bro, I'm not perfect. So I'm gonna hop on Zoom. And uh, everybody was really helpful. You know, it wasn't like they were putting me on blast and I needed it, man. And that was like the ultimate catalyst for me uh, to come out the gate swinging. Yeah. No, and, and it's so important. Uh, we talked about this on one of our other calls. It's like sometimes we say we're coachable, but we're not doing coachable things as far as, you know, participating in these different uh, opportunities that, you know, we have to be able to grow and, and get better. Um, and, and part of it was because you had your own, you know, you had prior experience, right? What was, yeah. what was, I guess, some of the differences between, you know, doing property casualty versus now switching over to the life side? I mean, the biggest thing was just like the client acquisition process. You know, we didn't have leads over there, nothing like that. So my move was to do like a cold door knock into like a business, right? And just like compliment the business owner. Hey, you know, Jermaine, I see you're a successful man. I'm an independent contractor myself. 
you know, I want to be put in your, in your shoes and have a successful business, you know, very quickly. Would you mind if I presented in front of your employees to practice? You know, so I would present in front of them and see if I could get some clients that way. Usually it turned out okay. But, uh, and then cold calls, you know, so for whatever reason, that just, that change in my mind, I don't know if I didn't trust the leads fully. I didn't know if, I don't, I don't know what was going on, man. But the second that I did actually trust the leads, it was, uh, you know, I couldn't get enough of them. <laughs> <laughs> no, completely understand that, man. And, and I'm, I'm, a, I'm sure it was a relief to know that you didn't have to go you know, cold door knock and cold call folks that might not be interested in what you were, you know, trying to help them with, right? Man, 100%. 100%. I think a lot of it was, honestly, Jermaine, is like uh, my, at my prior experience, I was surrounded by, you know, folks that were 20 or 30 years older than me that have been in this industry forever, you know? So it was almost like these like mental boundaries that they place, you know, like we don't do business that way. You know, so it was, it was almost like, man, I, leads can't be real. Like insurance is like, you know, I got to be a pavement Pete and go out there, beat the streets to, you know, go and eat. But uh, there's a better way. Yeah, 100%, man. And when, when you talk about that, I know one of the apprehensions agents have, Jake, is the investment into leads. And, and yeah. it really, in my opinion, let me know if you agree or not. It, it's really an investment in yourself and it's tied mm -hmm. into the belief level you have in yourself. So how did you approach that? Did you have a challenge with kind of opening up that, that wallet and saying, all right, let me put it on the card or let me put it on the debit card or whatever the case may be. And how did you overcome that if you did? And what did your investment look like starting out? Man, honestly, I just, you know, just crunch the numbers. You know, if, if I can book like 30 appointments a week, like everybody preaches, you know, and I can close it maybe like a 25% ratio, you know, even if it's like three, four, five policies a week, um, that two grand up front, that's coming back really quick. I mean, we have next day pay. I understood that. I understood the structure. But uh, if I'm being honest, I, told, I loaded a bunch of happy agent leads and uh, game time leads up in the car for the first time. It was about 2000 bucks, And uh, it was going to max out a credit card for me. So I handed it to my, to my wife to punch in the credit card details and hit send. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, man. But I mean, if you, you attack it like that, I mean, you know, if you get a 25% in grade school, bro, you're redoing the fifth grade like every year, man, you know? So, uh, but luckily enough, we don't have to be, you don't have to get a hundred percent here. We're 75%, dude. You don't even have to get a 50 and you can go out and crush this thing. And, you know, Forex, the average income of, you know, anybody else that's in the life insurance industry outside of FFL. Yeah, no, a hundred percent. And even what you're saying at 25%, you know, if you have 30 appointments and 25% of them, you're able to protect. I mean, that's seven and a half policies if you're doing exact math, right? Um, yeah, yeah. And you know, if if let's say each policy paid you a thousand dollars in commission, that, I mean, that's that's a great living for most people. You know, <laughs> especially what's happening in the economy right now. So, um, I know Man, one of the was five hundred bucks. You yeah, know what I'm saying? Right? <laughs> seven and a half. Like, talk about doubling and tripling your investment. You got it right there. Exactly. I, I know um, some agents struggle. Um, Jake, with getting to that 30 appointment number. And mm -hmm. what would you say to someone that, you know, wants to get there and they feel like they're struggling? How can they evaluate what they should do differently? Man, there's a ton of things. There's a ton of things like you can, because uh, it's, it's all the phone. It's all the phone base. So, I mean, you can record yourself on your live dial, send it to your upline, say, hey, bro, this is one I booked. This is one, this is two that I did not book. Um, what, like, what do you think? What's the main difference that you're seeing? I need to shift my perspective in looking at this. Um, that helped me out a lot. I still do that to this day, honestly. I'll just send, send it to my new agents that we're bringing in and be like, hey man, you know, I didn't book this one. What, what would you say I could do better here? So they get used to that. Um, you can time yourself on the phone. You know, like the first time I did that, I was extremely surprised. You know, like my average dial would be like, once I got them on the line, about three minutes. You know, which is just like grossly too long. You're yeah. not in control of the conversation if you're doing that, you know, so I dialed it back to two minutes and I just had like a, you know, an army style analog watch on my wrist. I would just, you know, hit boom, start, stop, reset all the time until I could get it down to like a minute, 15 seconds. More dials, shorter amount of time, getting organized the night before, stuff like that. And then honestly, man, it's just like, you just got to full send it, dude. Cause like it, this doesn't take talent, bro. Like you don't have to have a 42 inch Burton B67 and know how to shoot threes and have handles like crazy, bro. You just have to know how to hit the phone 
get organized the night before and, you know, have the right tone on the phone too. Yeah, absolutely. And what's your mindset when you're on the phone? Because mindset is a big part of what we do. So I want to, I want to, I want you to share a little bit about your mindset when you're getting on the phone and then your mindset overall in, in business. Um, so what's your phone mindset? When you're picking up the phone, you're about to make those dials, this dial date like today. What are you thinking? Yeah, man, before I get before I get up and ripping, I mean, I heard a, a new agent say this, like, shoot, it was probably about six months, six months ago now, but I've never heard it explained better. Um, he was just like, hey, he was talking to another new agent. He was like, hey, Nick, you know, if you were a lifeguard at the pool and someone's drowning in the pool in front of you, and it's your job to save that person. Are you going to wait for their permission to jump in and save them before you save them? Or are you just going to save them? I was like, dude, that's perfect. That's so perfect. You know, so that's the mindset on the phone, man. It's like they, they're they looking for life insurance. Do they know that me, Jay Cohen, is going to be calling them and when I'm going to call them? No. But they're still looking around for life insurance, and that's my job. And I bought that lead, you know, so now it's my job to resolve that lead. You know, so I'm, gonna, I'm not going to ask questions once I get them on the line. I'm telling them what to do. You know, I'm telling them who I am, what I'm calling about, where I'm, where I'm at, what I'm going to do, how I'm going to do it. And we're going to pin down a time where I'm going to swing by. It's going to take 15 minutes. We're going to knock this thing out together. Makes sense. You know, I like that. I like that analogy. <laughs> yeah, yeah That's dude. good. Um, I mean, the second we all uh, kind of quit asking permission to do our job, I mean, the floodgates open up. Trust me on that. Yeah. And, and that's good because that's mindset right there, Jake. Um, a lot of times I'll hear agents and, and it's like you could tell back to what you're saying about tonality that it's almost like, oh, yeah, if, if, if that time works, I would like to come over and uh, see if I can possibly help you. And uh, I'm on the other line like, no, I'm good. <laughs> yeah. So talk, talk about that assumptiveness and not asking permission to, to do our job. Um, yeah, and, man, it's just... It's just operating on in the land of uh, absolutes instead of like that gray area, you know? So it's like, yes or no, or I'm going to be there or I'm not going to be there. It's like, there's no like if buts, maybes, kind of, you know, possibly, potentially, none of that. Like, you just got to get that out of your vocabulary, you know? So Jermaine, it's, you know, what's, what time do you usually get off work? Six. Okay, cool. Your wife's usually at home. She's taking care of the kids. So she's free at six as well. Okay, I don't have a six, Jermaine, but I could either pencil you in for six, six thirty or seven forty-five. Which one's gonna work best for you guys? Fifteen minutes. You know, like there's no, like you have them dead to rights because you're speaking just so just one directional. They can't really like move. You know, it's almost yeah. like they gotta they gotta pick one. You know what I'm saying? So that just the, operating in the land of absolutes, bro. I mean, that helps out a ton. Yeah, no, hundred percent. And when you um most of the business that you do or all of it is it in person virtual how is that right now man so if i'm being honest with you last year all that production minus uh three applications was all in person right. yeah i mean i me personally man i think you have to be a lot better with tonality and like the understanding the psychology and what's going on on the phone because i mean you're just one red button away from you know just blowing an hour yeah. You know, if you're doing telesales, my friend, you know what I'm saying? I, I don't yeah. want to put myself in that position. So, um, you know, on the phone, like, just think about it, like, with your senses, right? Like, on the phone, they can hear you. If you're doing virtual or FaceTime appointment or something like that, they can hear you and see you. But in the house, they can hear, see you, and they can feel your presence as well. Yeah. They can feel your good intentions. You know, they can see what you look like and see you looking them in the eyes and, you know, seeing that you have good intentions. Um, so I just wanted to team myself up to, you know, get the most out of this. That's why I did that. Yeah, no, 100%. And uh, we, we like to encourage agents to start, um, if not stay, uh, in person. Um, you know, obviously, mm -hmm. there's different circumstances, different situations. Everyone's independent contractor, but we know that you're going to close better uh, and be able to better protect families when you, you go out in person, especially if you're new to insurance, too, like and haven't done any type of sales before. Sometimes we'll have agents that are transitioning from insurance like uh, like you did uh, on the property casualty side. Maybe they were on the health side and they, they're used to being on the phone they've developed that skill set, but it is a skill set. I think sometimes folks think, uh, you know, in their mind, it's just like, hey, man, I'm going to get my insurance license. I'm going to sell insurance over the phone. And it's all going to be great. But no, you, you're either going to have to spend a lot of money getting your teeth kicked in and learning, um, uh, <laughs> or you're just not going to be good at it. But being able to get out there in person allows you to adapt that skill and, earn and learn that skill set so much faster 
And then you could decide, hey, do you want to keep doing it? I'm still in the field, Jake. Um, I, I just enjoy it. I, that's why I got in the business, uh, just to be able to meet with clients, kneecap to kneecap, um, you know, and, and, and help them and take a selfie with them when we're done. And now, you know, you got a new best friend. So it's actually, I really enjoy uh, that aspect of it. But of course, with business today, we could do it anyway. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, now, talk to us a little bit as far as, you know, um, when you've got the schedule booked up, are you doing anything specific to plan for that field day, um, like the day ahead, uh, mindset wise, or anything you know that you're putting together just to kind of make sure you're fully prepared? Man, mostly it's just the schedule, just getting the, the schedule pinned down the right way. Um, you know, so like I'll run, I either have agents t take a nine appointment a day schedule or an 11 appointment a day schedule, right? A nine appointment a day schedule is, you know, eight to eight every hour and a half. 11 appointments is 8 to 8, 30 p.m. every hour, 15 minutes, right? So you can get two extra in that way. But uh, for every appointment, every two appointment slots, I'm going to book one backup appointment, a floater appointment for both of those time slots, right? And I'm just going to attack my schedule, man. I know if I attack the schedule like a hungry dog on the back of a meat truck, you know, it's, gonna, it's all going to work out just fine. I'm going to see the amount of people I want to see, you know, but instead of having like nine appointments in a day, right? Now you got 14, with the backups and the floater appointments, right? So you can really allow yourself to be very straightforward, clear and concise, you know, in the first five to 10 minutes when you walk into a house and if it's a no-go, dude, go to, that, go to that floater appointment, you know, get used to running a little bit behind, um, you know, and, and don't get happier is when you're on the phone, right? You know, someone books an appointment with you and you're like, and they're like, yeah, yeah, yeah we're gonna be there. It's like, okay, awesome. Like I'm a new agent, like, let's go. I just got, I got my first appointment booked. You show up and they're not there right? Work on those tie downs, man. Work on those tie downs. Like after you book an appointment, let them know how busy you are. Like nobody that you call up can be as busy as you are, Jermaine. So I would just be like, Hey, Jermaine, I know we, you picked that 745 appointment, man, but I am, we're, we're at the end of the month trying to meet our quota. You know, we got a lot of people to see, man. So, I mean, if you're going to book an appointment, I got to make sure you're going to be there. Are you usually good about keeping the appointments that you book just out of respect? Okay, cool. I appreciate that. If I am running a little bit behind and you don't hear from me, just know, just know I'm on the way. My prior appointment just ran a little bit long is all. You know, so I mean, just again, just super straightforward. If I book a schedule up, you know, 11 appointments in a day and I got five backups, dude, I mean, it's a, it's going to be a, a winning day. That's for sure. And, and to book up those 15 appointments, I get this question a lot and I want to see what your answer is. Um, and the question is, well, how long does it take you to book 15 appointments? <laughs> <laughs> so what's your answer to that question, Jake? <laughs> I mean, that's the, the uncertainty, man. I mean, when you're your own business owner, Jermaine, it's like, you know, it's almost like it reminds me of like a little kid being afraid of the dark. Like you don't even know what's there, but so, you know, so it's kind of scary. Right. But once you get your numbers, like you got to get your numbers, it's like a new business owner. Right. So I'm just having everybody attack, attack the dials. Like I want to see how many minutes you're actually dialing in a day not hours, because it's easy for somebody to say, yeah, you know, I dial for eight hours, you know, but they went to the bathroom like 16 times and they made like four sandwiches and they were playing with their dog out in the front, you know, front, front lawn, whatever, you know, like I want to see how much time you're actually dialing. So like our dial trackers are like time oriented, you know, and then also we can associate time with activity, you know, so how many dials are you getting in per hour? How can we shave that down a little bit? How can we shave down your phone script a little bit? You know, because once it's predictable, dude, I mean, the floodgates are open, you know, so get, get this thing predictable. You want to know, like, if you buy X number of leads and you sit down and dial for X amount of time, X amount of minutes, and you book X amount of appointments, it's going to correlate to X amount of income. You know what I'm saying? So, I mean, me personally, at this point in time, Jermaine, I don't care how long it takes me to book 15 appointments, dude. Like, I'm just going to do it until it's done. Yep. Yep. And that's typical my answer. Whatever it takes is whatever it takes, right? Um, yeah. cause you know, the next day, then it's just protecting families and, you know, it, it's, 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 that's the easy part. The, the work is the dial day when you're, when you're booking those. And are you using a mixture of leads, Jake, or are you using one specific lead type? What does that look like for you? Yeah, bro. I mean, every time I've relied on one specific lead type, it just, you know, brings me back to high school relationships, bro. I mean, out the window real quick they come as quick as they leave you know what i'm saying <laughs> i agree <laughs> you know so you have one lead type man i mean they they could be you know 
going out on dates with somebody else, you know, and they're not treating you right that day, you know, but, but if you have two or three, at least one of those lead types is going to treat you nice that day, right? You know, that, that phone day, uh, the, the day in the field, all that stuff, man. And I mean, plus like, you know, if you're wired a little bit like me, you got a built in, you know, beat to you a little bit of ADHD, all that, whatever good stuff it is. Um, man, I get bored if I have like 11 mortgage appointments in a day. I want to throw some final expense in there. I want to throw some like instant internet leads in there, dude. I want to throw some internet life lead one month in there, you know, and keep myself sharp. Absolutely, man. A good mixture. And, and the, the best part about that is, you know, um, there's no secret leads, right? Sometimes, you know, agents will think, oh, this leads a secret. It's just, the secret is having enough leads. And um, when you're helping new agents, Jake, what's your recommendation as far as number of leads they need to have on a dial day? Man, I was like to have between 60 minimum and 100. 60 minimum and 100. And uh, I mean, it's just getting more at bats, it's getting more reps. You know, if you have 100 leads, man, even if it's 11 bucks, like it's all instant internet leads and you spend, you know, just over a grand to get 100 instant internet leads and somebody hangs up on you, bro, you've got 99 more. You got 99 more. So, I mean, I don't even have to feel bad about that person, you know, hanging up on me or, you know, cussing me out on the phone. It's like, dude, I got 99 more. I don't have time for this. I got more people to call. Like, all you need is those 15 yeses. That's all you're looking for. 100%. That makes it all worth it, man. Um, talk to us a little bit, Jake, as far as um, in-home. Um, I know structure is the biggest part of the um, appointment. How are you structuring your appointment? What does that conversation look like with the client? And any tips that you would you know, give to any agent that's looking to get better at protecting families when they're sitting in front of them? Man, I would just say, um, get really good at being, you know, super honest with people and like, so like genuine and honest with them that they like, that it's like blatantly apparent to them, you know, cause really, really bad insurance agents like Jermaine, I don't know how many life insurance there are in the United States. I know there's a ton of them though. And I know there's a lot of really, really bad ones. And those are my best friends, right? Cause they, they make a mess of everything. And then I get to come in and not be a pushy salesman and just be a super honest, genuine human being with them that they can feel that humility, you know, and then it, it puts a different taste in their mouth. They're like, man, you know, when people start telling you, Jermaine, like, man, we had a bad experience with the guy before, but this was like a breath of fresh air, man. Thank you for taking the time and for calling me 27 times before noon yesterday to book this appointment. I appreciate you. You know, when you're getting stuff like that, dude, you know, you're doing stuff right. Uh, but yes, uh, structure in the house, just, I mean, super simple, bro. I mean, I don't like to bring anything out of my bag because I don't want to put anybody on the defense. You know, I, I've ran, I've ran business and, you know, shoot, Philly, Georgia, Florida, California, Arizona, all over the place, dude, all over the place. And people are different everywhere. Yeah. But one common thing is, uh, you know, people don't like to be sold. You know, they just like to buy, yeah. you know, so I don't want to seem like a salesman at all. Once I get in the house, I'm just going to leave everything in my bag and just have a conversation with them and put a policy in place on you just in conversation immediately. You know, so Jermaine, what do you want this policy to do for you? Right. I don't have to justify it any further, dude, because I mean, that's what that's being assumptive. Being assumptive is not saying I assume being assumptive is like acting like they're going to buy it because they feel that elite. With your verbiage, with your tonality and everything, you know, like if you like Jermaine, if you knew that. You, if you had 11 appointments tomorrow, you know what I'm saying? And if you knew every single person was going to buy, no matter what, how you would act in those appointments, that's being assumptive, yeah. right? Jermaine, what do you want this policy to, to do for you, dude? Who are we protecting? Who's your beneficiary? How are they going to be impacted if something happens to you and you don't have this product in place to protect them? Got it. That's why I'm here, right? Makes sense. Makes sense. So let's talk about your health a little bit. We'll get into some options and, you know, whoever your beneficiary is, I'm going to say hey, we're building a plan to protect, you know, uh, Jermaine's wife, right? You know, just get super personable with him. Ask about the beneficiary because we all know once, uh, once we show them that first price and it's more expensive than they thought it was going to be, you know, you have all the leverage in the world and you get to stand up for their best interests. You know, like Jermaine, at, before we saw Price, my friend, at the beginning of this appointment, you told me no matter what, you would do anything it takes to protect your wife and your kids. You know, so why did that change the second you saw this was 200 bucks? 
let me just remind you that, you know, you're getting all your cash back. So this is a poor savings account with life insurance attached is all. And you're just leveraging a small portion of your monthly income against a life insurance company to pay out those big tax-free dollars for you and your kids if something does happen. I like that question um, that you asked, and I don't know if anybody wrote that down, but you guys should definitely write that one down. Um, you know, how's your family going to be impacted if they don't have this coverage? And then shut up and listen and have them explain. And typically, it's exactly what you said. You'll hear, well, hey, that's why you're here. I need this coverage, <laughs> right? <laughs> and that's kind of like when you know the sale is made. And, and it's crazy to see, Jake, because a lot of times, you know, when you approach it the right way, you set it up the right way, the sale is made before you even show the numbers, right? Mm -hmm. you, you already know, hey, it's established and it's just a matter of helping them find, you know, their, um, what fits their budget and what fits, uh, you know, uh, the coverage amount that, you know, fits their needs. So that's pretty yes, awesome. Sir. And the power of those questions. Are there any other questions like that that you ask um, to help dive in on the need? Because I know Easton, uh, Easton did the training for us uh, last year. Um, I believe it was the end of last year. And he talked about a few of the questions that he asked. And he's great at asking questions in the home. Anything else that comes to mind that you sometimes use um, up front or even on the back end of the appointment? I mean, man, honestly, just like to open up the open up the conversation. I mean, me personally, I haven't found anything better than what do you want your policy to do for you? You know, because you're putting it in place on them like right now and you, you've only been there like two minutes. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. It just kind of sets the tone and they're telling you what they want their policy to do right away. Um, and it's going to it's always going to be like some generic, you know, vague uh, response right out the gate. Like, oh, I just want to pay for my you know, funeral and burial. And then you get to dig and just keep at my rule of thumb, man, is like I can't pinpoint like one question, but I can pinpoint like a, you know, a, a leverage. Right don't stop asking questions about like the beneficiary or their situation until you have leverage and that leverage comes into play on the back end once you show them price so you can stand up for their best interests right because everything jermaine and i are talking about if we're in an appointment right now and you haven't seen price yet if i move off that too quick and i don't have any leverage to stand up for your best interest at the end like dude i might not even like it's it's a waste of time to even show price and I've done that where I, you could sense it after doing this for a period of time. You're like, huh, that's like the fries aren't done all the way yet. They need to sit a little bit more. Right. And I've had to circle back and I'm looking at my client worksheet. I'm like, oh, I missed a question here. And then I go into that question just to dig deeper into that need. Um, and I talked about that this weekend. There's a couple I helped Jake on Saturday and um you know, in the conversation, discovery part of the conversation it came up that both their dads had died in 2019. And an unexperienced agent would be like, oh, I'm so sorry to hear that. Uh, but I, I paused. I like kind of, hey, <laughs> throw the flag. Talk to me more about that. What happened to dad? How did he die? How long was he in the hospital? And just digging, 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 digging. And like, it's uncomfortable, right? Because you're talking about, you know, something that really hurt them deeply. But that's why we're here to make sure that when that happens to them, their family is in a good position. Um, and how how um, this was uncomfortable for me doing those type of things. Was that uncomfortable for you when you first started on the life side to dig it, you know, kind of open up the wound, for lack of a better analogy? <laughs> Man, 100 percent, 100 percent. It was super uncomfortable. Um, but I was lucky, I guess, enough experience wise to have a to have something happen where I saw the impact of not having life insurance, you know, on, on a family at my prior company. So it was a younger couple, you, you know, young thirties, beautiful family, four daughters. Um, you know, so the, the husband was out, you know, working the oil rigs in North Dakota, he'd be gone for two weeks at a time, but he just built, you know, a big $500,000 house, you know, by his hands, you know, for his family, beautiful house. I think the youngest daughter was like, Mm, maybe two or three, you know, so, you know, the wife wasn't working, right. She's raising the kids for the last 10 years and having kids. So, and uh, I remember it like it was yesterday. So I insured his, you know, his house, all his cars and all that stuff. And, you know, a uh, uh, more seasoned agent stepped in and said, you know, Hey, let me show you how to run this life insurance appointment. He just wanted to get a sale. And I was like, okay, cool. And so I just kind of like sat back and listened, but it was a, uh, it was a $500,000 life insurance plan. 
and it was 87 bucks a month, you know, and the guy was bringing home like eight, you know, so like 1% of his monthly income and he could have erased that problem. And that, that agent just basically spit out the price and showed him how it worked. And the guy said, no. And he was like, okay. And I was like, wait, what? That's not how it's supposed to go, bro. Yeah. You know, like I haven't been here that long, like two weeks at the time, but anyways, man, unfortunately um, I, I got to see, you know, the beautiful mother and her four kids again, like two weeks later, you know, came in hysterically crying, you know, did my husband pay for that first premium with a life insurance plan? He didn't make it home, you know? So when you think about like the actual impact that we can have for better or worse on a family, dude, like if you're awkward, it's not about you, bro. You know, it's a, it's the potential to kind of like save something like that from, you know, completely dismantling the family financially. Yeah. 100% man. And that's where it becomes bigger than us. And that's why I love this industry. Uh, I love this company. Cause you know, we talk about things like these, cause that's why we do what we do at the end of the day, we're here to, provide for our families, but it's about the impact we get to make where we're, you know, like we said at the top of the call, it's like we're impacting generations through life insurance and, and preventing financial disaster. Um, because I, I'm sure that, that that young lady would have been glad to have a check for $500,000 to, to help out with whatever she could cover at that time, man. And so that's why we push and, and that's why we get uncomfortable. Um, whether it's on the phone or it's in the home, it's like, hey, we, we, we are fighting for these clients. <laughs> and I like to say those when we ask those questions and we get those answers, that's ammunition to protect them. And, you know, we have to use that to be able to make sure they get protected. That's that's powerful. Thanks for sharing that story. And then, guys, on the call, one of the things that I did and I've done and continue to do in my career, when I hear stories like those, I write them down. And I'll use it and I'll say, hey, a colleague of mine had a client. Here's what happened. I don't want that to be the same situation here. What if we lowered the coverage? Would that make it better for you? If we instead of $87, if it was $75, would that fit better? And I'll work whatever I need to work to make sure we get some kind of protection in place and then and get their agreement. And stories sell, right, Jake? Stories like that, they, they do the selling. So you don't have to convince them because now the client's putting themselves in that situation and saying, yeah, no, I definitely don't want that to happen. And that you could get them protected that way. So appreciate you sharing that, bro. Um, Absolutely, dude. I see we got a question here in the chat. Let's jump to that real quick. Um, and then guys, if you have questions for Jake, again, top producer, Hall of Fame producer uh, with Family First Life. So I'd have a ton of questions if I were you. Um, Cameron asked how... Um, how did you grow your, uh, or how are you growing your agency, maintaining a high level of personal production at the same time? What, what can you uh, uh, say there, Jake? Man, just being intentional with your time and not, not dealing with the BS, you know? I mean, if you catch yourself scrolling through Instagram for like 30, 45 minutes, bro, quit. Um, you know, but like maximizing your day as well and your schedule, you know? So like if I have 11 appointments tomorrow, on my schedule, I've got like, you know, 15 to 20 minutes of drive time in between each appointment, you know, and I know one policy a week pays for one of my recruiters every two weeks on the pay, right? So I'm going to have my recruiter pre-screen a bunch of interviews for me and set them in between all of my appointments tomorrow. So I got 11 appointments, right? And I also got 11 interviews, right? Do that two days in a row, do that for 60 days and don't look up and see what happens, man. I think you're going to like the result. But, uh, you know, intentional with your time as well, like not booking fake appointments just to make it look like you booked a lot more appointments, like book those 15 appointments two days in a row with your backup floater appointments and just go to all the three star appointments, you know, and then uh, you didn't waste two days in the field because Jermaine, I'm sure you've been there, dude, like the first time I ran business out in Pittsburgh, I was like, Whoo, nobody's showing up, dude, I did a terrible <laughs> job on the phone yesterday, you know, I cut my day in half, I thought I was crushing it, you know, and I'm sitting in like a uh, you know, a grocery store parking lot, dude, like dialing for the next day, booking up the rest of my schedule. Not the most fun that can be prevented on the day before. No, no, that's anxiety right there. I don't need any anxiety. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, Cam has another good question here. Um, one, what did it feel like hitting the Hall of Fame? And what was the key for you um, to, you know, hit those numbers consistency, consistently each month? I got you, dude. Um, man, you, you kind of just said it like consistency, consistency with your, with your mindset, bro, consistency with your schedule, consistency with, you know, when you're cleaning out your integrity lead center leads, you know, marking them as sold clothes, leaving them as new, 
getting new leads organized, ready to rip for the next day. Um, you know, it just doesn't stop, man. Like once you find a system and a schedule that works for you on a daily basis, bro, stick to it, stick to it. Cause we've all been like Jermaine, you momentum. How beautiful is a, how beautiful is momentum, bro? Once you got it, you know, you got it. Yep. You know, you're, you're walking around with a little extra, you know, pep in your step every single day, but it's so easy to lose. It's just hard to build, man. It takes like four or five times as long to build that momentum up, you know? So realize where you're at with the momentum process, you know, and the results, compare them to the results that you want, you know? And if you, if you aren't getting them yet, dude, like you got some work to do. And most likely it's just being more efficient, being more intentional and just being consistent with your time and your schedule, everything you're doing. Yeah. And I, I like that. One of the themes I'm hearing in what you're saying, which we don't, um, we don't talk about enough or highlight enough, Jake is, you know, in this business, you, I like to say, you got to treat it like you're an athlete, right? What, what sport did you play, Jake? Football. Football. Okay. Gotcha. I could tell. I just wanted you to tell everybody. <laughs> you got the build on it. Like you could join the NFL right now, man. Uh, <laughs> but, um, but, you know, constantly improving, right? How can I yeah. be better in this area and, and breaking down the business and every aspect of it? Um, and looking at how can I get better at, you know, getting, you know, more dials per hour um, or getting my, my actual booking, uh, my appointments to be a lesser number of, you know, seconds on the phone, allow me to get to more clients. And it's just constantly looking at how can I improve, how can I tweak each aspect of this business, my in-home presentation, right? Uh, you know, if, I, if I'm in the house for an hour and a half, if I'm not selling anything, I'm obviously doing something terribly wrong. What do I need to tweak? Um, to be able to um, to get better at that. And I, I think sometimes because we work with a lot of people that are coming into this from W2 jobs, with your job, you kind of learn your skill set and then you just do that for the rest of your life. You know, you're on the 40 year plan. Whereas with this business, it's more like an athlete where you have to constantly look at how you can improve. Would you agree? I 100% agree, dude. I 100% agree. I mean, if there's one thing you can do every single day, like for yourself as well. Cause Jermaine, again, I mean, you've been in this game for a little bit. You're going to know what I'm talking about with this. It's easy to kind of like forget to take care of yourself. You know what I'm saying? So if you can do something for yourself, like every single day to put yourself into like a proactive mindset instead of like reactive, you know, like wake up and get a couple of chapters in of a, of a book, you know, or like, you know, I like to go and get a workout in, in the morning. I feel like I'm putting on like my emotional body armor for the day. You know, like not, nothing can touch me for the rest of the day. I don't have to worry about like, when am I, when am I going to go to the gym? When am I going to make time for myself? And it's not going to like hold me back. Now I can just truly be proactive for the whole day. Um, I think that kind of, I mean, for me, I've definitely been there. That can slip really quick. And once that slips, a lot of things are going to slip. So make sure you're like scheduling in your time, just like an athlete would, you know, this is my gym time. This is my study time. This is my time when I'm going to watch film and get cussed out by coach because I had a terrible practice yesterday. This is when I'm going to, you know, take my tests on an opponent that we're facing on Saturday. You know, just structure it. If you're coming from a W-2 position, cool. Structure it just like your old job. And you're clocking in and clocking out for yourself though. There's, there's no shame in that. Yeah, 100%. Yeah, I think that ties into um, Lisa's question because she was asking about uh, schedule. I mean, we pretty much understand schedule, dial days, you dial in. And, uh, but that I like that you mentioned that part, part of it of your morning is, hey, working out, reading, and, and making sure your mind is right uh, for the day. Um, uh, Lakin had a question here. Is, um, uh, Lakin, I'm not sure what you mean with this question uh, at, as a new agent. How do you handle in-home appointments? Um, he shows up to every appointment he schedules. I know that. Um, and, uh, if you, if you could provide some clarification and then she asked, do you send out, um, uh, appointment reminders, uh, to, to the appointments you have scheduled, Jake? I don't just cause I want to limit, you know, their opportunity to think about having the appointment at all. Yep. You know, I booked it. It's in their schedule. You know, I'm going to, one thing I did start doing, you know, about halfway through the year last year, and it saved me a lot of time is for every person that I had an appointment with that day, I would save their contact in my phone as like, you know, appointment one, appointment two, you know, 1145 appointment, whatever. And so if they call me, I know I'm not picking up that phone. Okay. And I'm just showing up, you know, and I can just pull the, pull the thing out of the hat. Like, oh man, my, my day's been crazy busy. Sorry, bro, I didn't get your, I didn't get your voicemail, but we're here, I'm here. This is gonna be 15 minutes, let's knock it out. Yeah. 
but uh yeah i mean i don't i don't like to send out those text messages hopefully you're you know clear enough on the phone and you know acting intentionally and leading that conversation up to where they know you're not playing and you're going to be there tomorrow at like 3 30. okay perfect um and this says um how did you handle uh your schedule after having uh no a full day of no shows reschedule uh when you got started versus uh are you doing anything different now in the way you handle that I mean, shoot, dude, there was a Zach, Zach T likes to talk about this all the time. So, <clears throat> cause I, I do like to go out and like conquer new areas. Right. I mean, like Jermaine, if you have a, you know, an agent up in Montana, like, dude, you're coming over, you're staying at my place. Like people are different here than they are in like Pittsburgh. Right. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Or like Boston, yeah. you know, the first time I dialed in Boston, like, I think I just came off like a 40 K week or something like that. 40 families yeah. help week. And then I go up to dial in Boston and, you know, I think I hit a goose egg and I had like 20 appointments that weekend, the following weekend, you know? So, I mean, it happens to everybody. Um, but the way that you respond to that is that's not happening again on Tuesday and Wednesday, you know, I'm coming back, I'm coming back with a vengeance on Monday dials. And I mean, that ain't happening again. Trust me on that. Absolutely. And Just the way we say it course. is, uh, the way I say it is the field owes you. And I don't know where I heard that, but I, I say it, hey, the field owes me. If I get go, you know, over for any period of time, a day, two days, then I know the next couple of days, it's just going to be <laughs> raining. Um, and, uh, you know, because it's dude, I'm, like, I'm glad you, Jermaine, I'm glad you said that, bro. I don't mean, I don't mean to interrupt you, dude, but we, act, we coach on this and within our agency all the time, you know, so like that, we actually switch that up just a little bit because I mean, I feel like when you say the field owes you, it's almost like there's a certain element of this business that's out of your control, but it, we change it up. We're like, dude, we owe the field, you know? Cause then that, then that puts it like right back in your court and like you're in control. Like I'm, I'm going to be down at seven o'clock in the morning. I'm going to make some people mad tomorrow morning, but I'm going to book <laughs> up, you know, eight appointments up before nine 30 when people, other people start dialing. So I'm good. Yeah. Yep, one hundred percent, and and the power of not quitting too, and um and we could kind of if there's no other question, um, but you know I listened to a podcast and um, this guy he's a, a distance runner, he ran for like thirty eight hours straight and he won the race just thirty eight hours straight. I, I forgot his name, but um, yeah, man. But he said the way he did it was you know he was he was patient, he was persistent. But he also had the the zero option mentality where it's like, hey, I'm not going to quit no matter what. I'm going to just keep putting one foot in front of the other. And a lot of times that's how you win in life. Right. Because, you you know, obstacles will come um, and um, having that mentality of, hey, I'm not going to quit is one of the keys to my success, at least me personally. I don't know if you can agree or what you would say on that respect. And I think if a lot of agents adopted that mentality a lot more people would be successful doing what we do, uh, even though, you know, what we do is simple, but it can be challenging. What, what's your thoughts on that? Man, I think uh, I'm a big, like, I love looking at like the alternative, you know? So if like an agent calls me up and they're like, man, I got my butt kicked on the phone. I just invested a thousand dollars in leads, you know, but that same agent, you know, helped three families out and he's never made that much, you know, profit in a week before, you know, let alone a month from his prior, from his prior job. You know, just like, just slow down. You know, Jermaine, what were you, what were you doing before you came over here, bro? You were, you were working in a union, you were working in a, you know, iron facility, you know, steel, steel factory, whatever. You were working, you know, your fingers to the bone. Do you want to go back to do this? You're going to be able to put up with a couple of bad dial days because trust me, it's going to happen again. He's like, yeah, you're right. You're right. Perspective, man. Perspective. That's a great way to handle those tough days too. Um, you know, each day you ask yourself that question. You look at what you used to do and what you're doing now, what you have the opportunity to be able to accomplish. Um, Andre has one last question here and we'll finish up. Um, what are your need to know numbers in order to grow your business? I'm not sure what he means by that. I don't know if you understand that, Jake. If not, Andre, you can unmute and uh, clarify. Yeah, Andre, why don't you unmute, bro? I want to get that question answered. That sounds like a good one. Sorry, it took me a while to unmute. Um, yeah, um, I'm just wondering as far as uh, we, we talked about like appointments and uh, and stuff mm -hmm. like that, but um, 
to to grow your business? Like, what what's, what are the numbers that you need to know at any given time? Like, where my business stands and 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 where it needs to be. I don't know if you understand what I mean, but yeah, that makes sense, dude. So, like, on a personal production side of things, um, the number one things that I would want to know, dude, is like, okay, if I if I book thirty appointments in a week, how many of those do I actually have a you know an honest sit with? Right. You know, if it's like 10 out of 30, like, bro, my phone script is trash and I need to put in, put it in the dump, dumpster and light that thing up. Dude, and, I, and I'm out, you know, because um, if you can if you can get 30 appointments in a week or 30 appointments booked up in a week, but you can start sitting down with like 16, pushing 18, pushing 20. I mean, man, you're going to be just fine. You know what I'm saying? And then you can start looking at like your closing percentage after that. But most of the time you won't even have to. You know, as long as you're sitting in front of the right amount of people, you're going to be good. Um, on like the, the business building side of things, man, like Jermaine, you know, I mean, shoot, we could go through reporting numbers after reporting numbers after reporting numbers, right? But I mean, just that, just that main needle. I mean, I mean, how far did we move from the issue paid business, you know, per riders in our organization from the prior month to this month? Right. Did, did we double over the course of the next 90 days? If we didn't double over the course of the next 90 days, you know, it's time to, you know, strip off all the layers of the business and, and pinpoint where that issue is, you know? So, I mean, it's all about the numbers, bro. And I mean, it, for me, at least, like I'm a very competitive, you know, person, like if I'm playing my grandmother in chess, dude, like she's going down, trust me, like <laughs> she's going to be upset after that thing is gone, it, you know, is over with. But for me, it, it helps to like remove the emotion a little bit, Andre, to, you know, put everything, in, put a number to have everything, quantify everything. Yeah, 100%. I know one of our agents here in Atlanta, Jake, um, Terry, um, he's always talked about um, knowing your number as far as being able to look and see, you know, um, average out what your, um, your average issue pay is per appointment that you have set. And that mm -hmm. way it helps you do exactly what you're saying, which is stay emotion free. Because, you know, every appointment I schedule is, you know, in a sense, equates to this many amount of dollars. So whether that's whether they show up or they don't show up, um, whether you help them, or you protect them or you don't protect them, just the average what you issue pay uh, equals this amount per appointment. And that way you're now encouraged because when you have those 11 appointments, uh, let's say it's, you know, $300 average per appointment. Now you know, okay, man, tomorrow that's already three grand right there, just going out to protect these families, no matter who shows up, who doesn't show up, who, you know, I get protected, who I don't get protected. And now you can go out with that confidence and you could truly focus on what can I do to help this family put them in a better position, um, you know, with, you know, one of these companies that I work with. So I like that. That's good stuff, man. And Andre, if you need some metrics to use, dude, I mean, this was everything I used last year. You know, so I just, I made it a point to, if it was a four week month, I'm going to have 120 appointments in a four week month. You know what I'm saying? And then, and then you got to like factor in time with your wife and your kids and all that stuff factor in, you know, when you're going to go travel to a sales conference and then you can almost like break it down by day. So like, I love walking into a day and I'm like, okay, I got it tomorrow. I got to book 11 appointments. And then the following day I need 17. Right. And I need to have, you know, 38 appointments this week to make up for last week. Cause I missed a field day. Right. If you just make a, a month goal of 120 appointments in a four week, 150 in a five week, and then just have an application goal instead of a premium goal, that helped me out a ton. Like my drop dead last year, every month was 40 apps every month, but my goal was always 48 and I only hit it twice. You know, and the, those two months that I did hit 48, it was over 100 families helped in a month both times. You know, but that way, at least I'm not like trying to like squeeze premium out of everybody. I'm just focused on like putting protection in place. And if I focus on the apps, man, if you got 40 apps in a month, like, trust me, that will add up nicely in your favor. Yeah. Makes sense. Thank you. Appreciate that, Jake. And I appreciate the transparency, man. Thanks for taking some time out. Anything else you want to share with the agency? Um, just to give you an idea, you know, we have uh, a mixed group here on the call. I'm looking through the, the uh, participants here and I see agents that are brand new. I also see agents that's been with us for, uh, you know, several months and a few years as well. So um, anything else that you want to share uh, before we, we head out? Man, my group's the same. Mixed group is the best group. Um, 
<laughs> absolutely, absolutely, bro. But uh, I would say <clears throat> one like cheat, like cheat code for me is like, obviously, like, don't wait until you like no, reach a certain level of like, you know, what you deem as success before you start building your business. You know, like you'd be very surprised the depths that you're willing to go once you do start to bring in some agents. Like you want to put your best foot forward in front of them all the time. So it's going to bring out the best in you to bring in agents. And I mean, the heart of the company at FFL is from Warren Market. You know, like Jermaine, we did this exercise last week with just five agents. And I was like, no pressure. Like, we're not going to just like reach out and bombard these people. But if you want me to call them with you, I will. So like, just write down as many names as you can in like five minutes. You know, between three individuals, Jermaine, there was 54 names. And they were all like, you'll help me recruit these people? I was like, of course I will. Of course I will. So, I mean, if you want to bring the best out of yourself, bring people in that are looking at you first to set the example and set the pace and don't wait. Good tip, man. Good tip. I wrote that one down. I want to use that exercise. <laughs> Appreciate it, man. Um, everybody drop some thank yous in the chat uh, for Jake uh, for being on today. Congratulations again, my brother, on the uh, new bundle of joy to you and your wife. And um, you, if there's anything I could do to help you, your team, you know, I'm ready to return the favor, man. So thank you. I appreciate it. This call was golden. Um, and everybody, we're going to have this recorded, um, this recording up on YouTube uh, by the end of the day today. So you guys can rewatch and share this. I'm out there with everybody that needs it. So thanks, Jake. Thank you, guys. Let's go crush it. All right, guys. Let's do that. Talk to you later.